Hey photographers, so today I want to talk to you about where my knowledge of photography comes from. The things I teach on my workshops, the talk about on my blog, craftingphotographs.com, the things if you come to one of my workshops that I'm sharing with you. It, it comes from a life in photography and I want to share just a, a couple of those experiences that really shape me. Uh, I went to college for photography, but one of the biggest seasons of learning for me happened when I, after college, moved to Yosemite and took a job at the Ansel Adams Gallery. And that sounds really good. It sounds glamorous. Uh, honestly, though, everybody there starts off uh, selling greeting cards behind the register. So I did a lot of that. But being in Yosemite, I was surrounded by a tremendous community of photographers. And literally just outside my door was one of the most spectacular places to photograph in the world. So I was in a place where I could make great work every day. I was in a place surrounded by photographers who were of a similar mindset and trying to pursue great photography, trying to, to make a name for themselves and make beautiful work that could be collected, that could be sold and make a living so they could just do what they love doing, which is photography. And I got to be surrounded by the incredible collection of work at the Ansel Adams Gallery from people like Ansel Adams, John Sexton, Charlie Kramer, Christopher Burkett, William Neal, the really the best of the best of landscape photographers and printmakers. And in my time there, I spent a lot of time looking at prints, a lot of uh, slow days in winter and uh, gave me some time to stick my nose really up close to Ansel Adams prints and prints from these other masters and ask difficult questions. What do they look like? How do they solve the challenges of contrast of highlights to what were they doing that made these things look so delicate in the lightest highlights and and yet vibrant in shadows that shadows weren't black and blocked up but were rich with detail and that experience of looking at prints was a foundational element of learning photography and i went on to be a assistant curator of photography at the ansel adams gallery yosemite and mainly what that involved was representing my artists, the artists that the Ansel Adams Gallery uh, represented, and selling their work. From that basis, then this revolution happened with digital printmaking. And I'd been in digital, this is uh, about 1997. I'd actually been with Photoshop since about 1991, and kind of went to Yosemite with the idea of digital wasn't mature. Getting these things out into print in a fine art quality really didn't exist. It was very limited, um, we'll say. There's, there were a couple options, but it was very expensive, very difficult, not a common process, not in a form that looked like what typical fine art prints would be. And then this thing came on the market called the light jet that let us take digital data and write it to photographic paper with lasers and process it in chemistry and make a photographic print. And this is the film days before digital capture. And printing was a big challenge, the color printing. Black and white printing, still a challenge to learn, but the technology was a pretty mature technology and amazing things could be done. But color through its various incarnations since it's been invented has always been a difficult process. And fine art photographers were looking to digital to solve some of the problems of the processes that came before to make beautiful prints, to make big beautiful prints that could hang on the gallery, that they could wall, that they could sell for money and make a living and share their work with others. So this thing called the light jet came out and it was a revolution. And finally, all these things I'd been working on for um, six, seven years in digital photography became possible to get these things out onto print form. And I started printing for people, myself and some of the photographers that worked at the Ansel Adams Gallery. And then I met a few other people. Uh, I started printing for Galen Rowell, who you might know, uh, who is one of the most celebrated landscape photographers in American history. And I helped him produce his first all digital show, about a hundred images digitally processed in the very early days when computers are really slow. And uh, this led to me leaving the Ansel Adams Gallery to start my own printmaking company uh, called West Coast Imaging. And from that, I started printing for photographers and well-known photographers, National Geographic photographers, making exhibits that went in museums and galleries and amateurs and enthusiasts, probably like yourself, the whole gamut of people who just wanted a really great print from their photograph. My goal was to make prints that the 
photographers that I respected and looked up to would find of the highest quality that they would want to use themselves and represent their work. Along the way, I learned so many things because I've processed files from every camera you can imagine, every lens you can imagine, from film to digital, solve the printing process problem, solve the difficulties to get those pixels onto paper, which is really mostly about processing. It's what you do. Printing is about processing what you're doing in the software, what decisions you're making. I learned how to hone my vision to be able to achieve very great accuracy of the, the things we want in printing, of density and contrast. Density is basically exposure, color, seeing color very well, saturation, so that I could make prints that could continue to satisfy my clients. So in these videos in the blog posts, that's what I'm sharing from, from projects that we made that would go to the Smithsonian or to a gallery in New York City or to a museum or to a show at a uh, gallery on the coast. Uh, again and again, making things that could meet the needs of the most demanding clientele and make beautiful prints was the challenge I had to face. So when you watch my videos or read my articles or do one of my online classes or in-person classes, the knowledge you're getting is this knowledge from uh, 20 years of making a living in photography, working with some of the top names in photography, me learning from them, frankly, it's been an education for me, working with people that I admire and uh, respect their work and having the chance to talk with them, I've learned so much and it's grown me so much as a photographer. And all these are about sharing my experiences, what I've been able to do with you. And it comes down to really a simple concept. In nearly 20 years of printing for people, working with nearly 20,000 clients and seeing literally hundreds of thousands of prints from people, I'm convinced of something that's really important. Every photographer has a unique story. You have a unique story that your experiences, your access, your point of view, your knowledge lets you tell that I couldn't tell and the other guy can't tell and the other photographer can't tell. There's a unique story that only you can tell. And my goal as a teacher is to give you the tools to tell those stories because I want to hear those stories. I can't tell it. I'm not going to see that story if you don't go tell it. So I want you to tell it and I want you to tell it equipped with the best skills you can so that you can tell it with the most clarity, with the most vibrancy, with the most vision, with the most impact that you can so that I can hear your story. And when I hear your story, I know something about you. And when you hear my story, you know something about me. That's the power of photography. And that's why I'm driven to make these videos, to teach, to help unlock these stories. So my message for today is go tell some stories. Tell us something about your world and the things you see that are unique to what you do. Or just make some good photographs. Go out and look carefully at your world. Make something about things you care about and share it with somebody. Share it with me, share it with your friends, share it on Facebook, and tell people why you wanted to make that photograph. And most of all, keep photographing, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next vlog.